The first question that everybody asks before they buy a franchise is, how much money can I make? Plus, what are the net margins? How long until I break even and more? And then to answer these questions, you need to build a financial model. And before you get too scared off, you don't need an MBA, hey, you don't need to be some Excel guru. I'm gonna show you my process that is simple but effective. This is the same process in the exact same spreadsheets that I have used to build our company to over $40 million in revenue and we will continue to use to over 100 million. If you wanna download these spreadsheets, I'm gonna put a link in below so you can put your email in there, grab those spreadsheets. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them below and I'd be happy to answer them. Building a financial model is more of an art than it is a science, right? People wanna think it's like buying real estate and that you can just like build this big Excel spreadsheet and you can pop in a bunch of numbers and it's gonna spit out some sort of like IRR or return on cash or like whatever. But it doesn't work like that because a franchise is a business and in a business, there are a lot of factors and performance varies significantly by the owner. And you wish that a franchisor could just tell you how much money you're gonna make, right? Like, but the problem is their crystal ball broke last week, so they can't do that. The other issue is that a franchisor would have extreme level of liability if they sold you a franchise and guaranteed that you would make so much money. So they don't do that. So you're on your own to build your own financial models, which is one of the big reasons I built this YouTube channel is to help arm you with tools, with resources, with knowledge, and with all this stuff to give you confidence. So if you get value from this video, please hit that subscribe button. You know, I'm working to become the number one franchise guy on YouTube, and I could really use your support. To build your financial models, you're gonna have to source information from six different places. To start, you're gonna use the franchisor's FDD. The FDD is the franchise disclosure document. It is the document that kind of discloses you, right? Tells you all this information about the franchise. It lays out all the fees, all the startup costs, all the royalties, you know, what their rules are. It includes contact information for all the other franchisees, both current and, and former. And I have a whole other video kind of diving deep into the FDD, so I don't wanna cover that here but it's important to know what it is and, and kind of how to read it. And I'll give you a, a little brief thing in a minute. So you wanna download the Franchise Wars FDD. You wanna look at also competitors FDD. So if you're looking at a new franchise, let's say it's in the, the window blinds business or whatever, and it's just getting started, you wanna look at their FDD, but you're also gonna to wanna to look at competitors FDD. So look at other you know window blinds, Franchise Wars FDD. That will help you you know, with, with some sales information, with some costs. Now they're completely different businesses. Keep, keep that in mind. However, there could be things that, you know, relate and it's important to know that you're going to want to look at industry wide data. So like if I was looking at the blinds business, I would want to know like as an industry, is it growing? Is it shrinking? What are averages? All that stuff. I'm also going to get into market specific. So for me in Philadelphia, I'm going to do research to see, Hey, in Philadelphia, what information can I find? Now in a service-based business, this may be a little bit more of a challenge, but in a retail-based business, I'm gonna know the rents, I'm gonna know what labor costs are, like taxes, like there's lots of things that I'm gonna be able to figure out based on my market. I'm also gonna talk to existing franchisees. Now, while the franchise or can't tell you how much money you're gonna make, other franchisees can tell you anything they want. So they can tell you what their sales are, what their costs are, what the margins are, you know, how much money they made last month. You can ask them anything you want. It's a question of how much are they gonna tell you but if you can build you know, some sort of relationship, you can actually get a lot of information out of them. I did a whole separate video on how to do this process called validation that we'll link below as well. And then finally, you're gonna have some good old fashioned assumptions, right? Like I'm gonna have ballparks of what I think insurance would cost me or what do I think I can do in sales or what my margins might be, right? At the end of the day, this is an art, not a science and you're gonna have to you know, shoot from the hip here. So to download an FDD, I recommend going on to one of the free state websites and grabbing them. I like to use the Wisconsin FDD search. So if you just go to Google here and you type in Wis Wisconsin FDD search, it will pull it up. It's this first one. And if you're looking for a franchise, you just go ahead and let's say we want to look at Papa John's, we put this in. And we can see if it says details here, that means they have a current FDD that you can download. So you just click on that, you click download, and then you'll be able to view the FDD. 
So this is the easiest, quickest way. Now, if the franchise that you're looking at does not come up in this search, it means they are not registered to sell franchises in Wisconsin. There are other states that websites that you can check out from California, Indiana, and I think there's one more. And if that doesn't work, you can contact the brand and the brand can send it to you. They have to send you as, as part of the process. So let's get into our model. To start, we're gonna look at a single location PL. Now in franchise, there are really two distinct models. We have a location-based PL, which is gonna be like a physical store, a restaurant, anything where like there's a profit center within four walls. Right? So if I open Papa John's pizza shops or Taco Bell's or whatever, like every location I would view as a standalone profit center, just like this, right? It would have sales, it would have cost of goods, it would have labor, it would have rent, it would have utilities, it would have advertising. Like I'd have debt on that specific business. Like it would all be contained within this silo. Now, the cool thing is I can run a territory based business in the same manner. So, for example, our painting business, we run like this, where each territory is has a manager they have a sales budget they have painters they've got advertising they have trucks like we don't cross a lot of of resources so each one we look as siloed profit centers now you could decide hey i'm going to run a territory-based business and i'm going to run it as just one giant like blob which is fine it's gonna be a little bit harder so we're going to use this p l for anything where each unit will stand alone as a profit center and later in this video i'm going to get into a truck-based model this is going to be a mobile service-based business where we have, you know, guys in trucks going to people's houses or businesses. And that one's a little bit different. So stay tuned for that, especially if you're looking at a truck-based business. But a lot of the principles will apply here to both. When I look at a p and I have four categories that I'm looking at. I'm looking at sales. So how much money can we generate? I'm looking at gross profit, which is our sales minus our direct cost of goods. So that would be our materials and our direct labor. And then we get into variable expense. Now a variable expense is one that is completely tied to sales. So royalty, for example, if royalty is 5% of sales, whether we are doing 10,000, 100,000, a million, or 10 million, we are paying 5%, right? It's, it's like a rope and it's completely tied. It goes up, it goes up, it goes down, it goes down. And so in franchising, you're gonna have a couple expenses that are variable. We're gonna have royalty. We're most likely gonna have advertising. We were probably to have like some sort of like brand fund or appointment center. Most likely we're gonna be accepting credit cards or we're gonna have a cost there. And you may elect to pay commissions to people based on sales. So I would account for that here. And then we have our operating expenses. Now these are gonna be more fixed expenses that don't vary as much, right? So we have salary paid to our manager. We have rent, we have our truck payment, we have insurance, we have like subscriptions you know, fuel, like there's things in this business that are pretty steady month to month, whether we're doing 50,000, 100,000 or 200,000. And then finally down here, we'll have some sort of debt payment. If, if we take on debt, that'll ultimately end with cash flow. And so to start, I'm gonna build this thing based off of a mature model, right? So like there's lots of different ways you can look at a franchise and, and build these things to say, hey, I'm gonna start like, what are we thinking to do year one, two, five, ten? 10? You know, I like to start with like at maturity, what do I think this thing can do? And so let's say I do my research and I talk to the people, I look through the FDDs and I do all the stuff I talked about a minute ago. And I think this, this business can do $750,000. The business, for example, let's say it's a, a service business that installs floors. You hire me and I come and I replace the carpet. I replace, you know, the hardwood, the tile, like whatever flooring you need, you know, I'm your guy to do it. And so in that model, generally you use subcontractors. So I would have subcontractors that I would have like in my Rolodex who know carpet, who knew tile, who knew wood, who knew vinyl, like whatever. And I'd, and I'd buy the materials, you know, based on what the need is. And I would sub out the work to get it done. And we go from there. And so let's say I do all this research and I believe that the gross profit will be 50%. So I do $750,000 in sales, 50% right off the back goes to paying my subcontractors and to pay my materials. And then I get into my variable expenses. Now, all the variable expenses you can find in item six of an FDD. So to start, we're gonna get the royalty. So to get the royalty, what you wanna do is in the FDD, you're gonna to go to item six and you're gonna look for a royalty. Now in this example, it says the royalty is a greater of 5% or 833 for the first 12 months. And then it kind of goes up from there. And so it is not uncommon that brands have minimum royalties. You're going to pay a percentage of your sales or, you know, whatever minimum is. And usually it's, it's usually it's like this where it starts small and it scales up. So that's 5%. 
So we go ahead, we put 5% in there. All right, so next we're gonna look at advertising. So at advertising, there's usually gonna be two things you're gonna look at, local advertising and brand fund. So usually the brand fund is paid just, just like them and, and, and the money goes into this giant bucket and they determine how they spend it. And then usually local advertising is money that you are gonna spend directly with you know, Facebook or Google or Angie's List or wh whoever you're using to get digital ads from. And so I like to break this out. So here I would put the put the 3% into brand fund and I would just like rename this to like brand fund. And then advertising I'd put as a 6%. The one thing you wanna do here is says, see, see it'll say like C note four. You wanna scroll down and like look at the note. So in this case, in addition to the brand fund, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're good. Sometimes the brands will say you have a monthly minimum spend. So if it said, hey, it's 6% or $5,000 a month you have to spend. That'd be six, 60K a year. So what this does is basically puts in, hey, what's higher, the minimum you have to spend or a percentage of your sales? But in this case, they have no minimum, so it's gonna be 45,000, you're gonna have 3% to your brand. Some, some brands have an appointment center of, that you're gonna pay like one or 2% to use. In their case, they don't have that. And then credit cards, like this is a number that you're gonna put in here based on what percentage of customers you think will pay in credit cards. In most businesses, you know, they're gonna run about two and a half to 3%. If you use 100% credit cards, it could be higher. It could be a little bit lower. And then this is where you're gonna put commissions you're gonna pay to their salespeople. So if I'm gonna run this business, let's say I'm gonna pay everybody, I don't know, 2% of sales or something. So I'll put that in here. And then this will be a variable expenses. So pretty much we have 18% of our sales are gonna be tied to our variable costs. So if we raise the sales to a million bucks, guess what other things it'd be? Boom, 185,000. If we, if we only do 500,000, it drops to 92, right? This variable expense is completely tied to our sales. So the higher we drive our sales, the more money we're gonna pay in these categories. Now let's get into our operating expenses. Now our operating expenses are gonna be fixed, right? So a manager salary. Now in this case, let's say I plan to operate it myself and I guess I wouldn't pay myself a, a commission. Then. So maybe we'll put that, put that back to zero. And then I'll show you what it would look like if we hire somebody. I'm not gonna have loaded costs because you know I'm not gonna have payroll taxes. I'm gonna take the money as distributions. I am gonna have some subscriptions though. So let's go back to that FDD and let's look at some of these things. So it says annual software maintenance upgrade. That's a thousand bucks. Here we go. We're gonna owe 300 to $450 as some sort of cell phone service. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put usually the higher in there. Renewal fee, software access fee. It says currently licenses two to 400 per, per month per user for the system. So I'm gonna say another $400 there. So 850 annual convention, whatever, it's like a one-time thing. The other spot I'm gonna look now, this is item six. I'm gonna keep, just keep scrolling. You'll get to item seven. Now this is your startup cost. But there's a couple things in here that we might be able to, to, to pull out, right? So here we've got the software access. We already know about that. Uh, there's, there is, let's see, personnel and staffing, initial advertising expense. That's gonna be your like grand open marketing. That's on an ongoing basis. Or, so we're gonna build this in. Here we go. So insurance, right? So a liability in a vehicle insurance, twenty five hundred to six thousand dollars a year. And so I'm gonna say, hey, insurance. I'm gonna put that in as five hundred bucks a month. This is this column here is monthly. This is annual. So six thousand dollars a year. I'm gonna be a little conservative. Uh, let's see, miscellaneous opening costs, additional costs, real estate, and maybe I find out that this place actually needs a small warehouse, right? Because remember, we're in the flooring business. They're gonna be delivering flooring stuff to us. So maybe I realize like, hey, I actually need to run, rent a small warehouse here that's like 2,000 bucks a month for product to be delivered that my, my subcontractors can come and pick up and, and, and go and install. I am gonna have something there. I'm gonna have a vehicle payment of 500 bucks a month. I'm gonna spend, I don't know, maybe another 250 bucks on fuel. Uh, supplies is gonna be like just general business supplies. I don't know, I'm gonna put 300 a month there. And then other, I mean, I always like to bake in a pretty good amount of money here, let's say 1,600. I'm gonna have roughly $6,000 a month, 72K a year of, of just like general operating expenses. And so if I can do 750,000 without a manager, right? I'm the manager, I'm working this business every day, I'm making about $179,000 a year, right? Uh, not too bad. But let's say that I wanna hire a manager because my plan is to grow this thing. 
So I'm going to put in a manager salary that I'm say, hey, I'm going to pay him 45 or her $4,500 a month. And I'm going to pay him that, that 2% of commission that, I, that I'm not paying myself. So then we get to loaded cost. Now loaded cost is like the payroll taxes that, that the employer is going to pay and health insurance and that kind of thing. I'm going to put it at 15%. So just into this column, put in a percentage if you're using my formula. But what it does is pretty much it adds the commissions plus the salary and puts a number there. So in total, our manager who's going to run this business for us, we're going to pay him almost $70,000 a year, which includes his commission. Plus he's going to have that company vehicle and I'm still going to clear hopefully about a hundred thousand. Not, not too bad. So now that I am out of running the day to day, I'm going to focus on growing the business, right? So I want to be opening up multiple locations. Let's say I decide, Hey, I'm going to launch a second, a third and a fourth location, right? So like ultimately this is where I want to go. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to learn the business. We're going to get this thing up and going. And I'm going to buy multiple territories. I'm going to run each territory like as a separate unit, as a silo. And I'm going to have a similar model for every unit where you're going to generate sales. We're going to have gross profit. We're going to have royalty, brand fund, advertising, all this stuff. I'm going to have a manager for every one. He's going to get paid commission. And the reason I'm hiring the manager is because I want to free up my time, right? So that I can focus on growing the business. So now let's say that we use debt to fund this business. It cost us $200,000 was the, to the total investment. And I was able to put down $80,000, let's say, until I got a $120,000 load. The rate right now, I don't know, 9%, uh, let's say from the SBA, maybe, maybe it's 10%. And we get a 10 year term. I'm going to have a monthly payment of 1500 an annual payment of almost 20,000. And so my cash flow now is $80,000. So I'm going to run a couple more scenarios here though. So like, I'm going to say, Hey, what if I only do 500 K my first year? Now I'm making 21,000. What if I only do 400,000 my first year? I'm losing $9,000, right? So I'd want to run this scenario at multiple levels based on sales, based on what your debt financing is, based on, are you running it or did you hire a manager? And I'm also going to look at, Hey, what if we do really well at this thing? What if I get this thing to like $1.2 million in revenue, right? Man, I'm making 240,000 net in like 20% after debt payments. I'm netting 220. Like, wow, that's like a really strong model, right? But then it's this question of like, how reasonable is it to get to $1,200 in revenue? Is that average? Is that like the top 10% or is that, you know, low, right? Like are, are there guys doing $3 million and that if they can do it, you can do it. This sheet is really good just from a single unit, like right? try to understand the economics and play with these different factors, right? What happens if gross profit drops? So let's say we're, we're at our $750,000 and gross profit drops to 45%, right? So now instead of making 13%, almost a hundred grand. If this drops, I, I lose five points, right? Right off the top, I'm only making 62K now, right? And what if this manager in my market, I couldn't hire for, I got to pay 5,500 to get somebody decent. And what if my real estate costs 4,000 a month? And what if this interest rate was closer to 12%? And what if I only puts down 60,000? So it means I, I took more, I have a bigger debt payment. So now all of a sudden, this business that we thought was making a hundred grand doing 750, all of a sudden is, is breaking even. It's important to kind of play with this and start to see how like small changes in sales and margin and debt and your expenses can have a massive impact on your bottom line. And it goes in both directions, right? Use the sheet to build out that. All right. So now we're going to get into multi-unit ownership. So we start with a single location. We've, we've got it cranking. We've got a manager in place, like all is well. You know, I have now time to focus on growth instead of focusing on, you know, me going out and, and selling the jobs that moves me over here. And, you know, ultimately just like as a, a direction of where we're going, our goal is that we have five locations and then we have a regional director who oversees those five locations. Now in the beginning as the owner, like you may act as the regional director where you were the one hiring and overseeing and managing your team. Eventually you may hire somebody to replace yourself. So you can focus on higher level projects. You have more time, you can golf, like whatever you want to do. This is the direction we're going into. Obviously there's like a timeline of, of how quickly we can get there. I don't want to cover all that in this video. But what I do want to get into is kind of what, what does it look like from a model standpoint? Let's say we get this thing going and we get five locations up and going and fast forward whatever amount of time, right? A couple of years here probably. And we have our first location doing 750. We have another one doing 800. We have one just like dying at 500. We've got one at 1.2 and we got another one at a million. So we got five locations doing $4.2 million. 
We have a gross profit of 50%, right? All those variable expenses from the previous screen, you know, those get all kind of copied over. And then we have all of our fixed costs, right? We have our manager's salary. We have loaded costs here that I got to fix on my, my spreadsheet. We've got rent. Now, rent could be kind of interesting here, right? So if in some models, you are going to have uh, no rent, right? In my painting business, we have zero rent that we pay. And so this line item zero. Now in this business, you know, if you need like supplies dropped off to a single place with your team get, goes and picks it up, it could create a little bit of a problem. Now, if, if they're contiguous areas, like all the areas are connected to each other, your team may be able to share one warehouse that all of your subs drive to. But if they're like really far away, you might need multiple warehouses. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to make this up here, but like I'm going to have basically two warehouses that'll cover my five territories, right? Then we're gonna have subscriptions, right? We'll assume all of them have the same. We're gonna have all the same insurance. We're all gonna have vehicle payments for our sales reps and fuel and other expenses and all that stuff. And then we're also gonna have this region column. So now the region column is gonna be all the expenses related to the regional director. So it could be you to start or eventually that you know, will be an employee. But like as a regional director, you are going to have your own like vehicle payment. You are going to be spending money on fuel, driving all around. You are going to have maybe a virtual assistant or somebody who's going to help you. And you're going to have workers comp and like liability insurance. And you're going to have subscriptions of like other things that you're going to use. You want to build in some expenses for that regional regional director. And maybe you're going to say, hey, I'm going to pay myself a salary of $80,000. And you go from there. So then you start to see kind of what happens where you have this location making 100K, this one a little bit more in sales is doing well. This one's barely making any money. This one's doing really good, right? And we have a loss here in the region, but in total, you know, we're making almost $600,000, right? And then we can start to play with the numbers, just like we played with the numbers before. So you say, hey, what if I fix this location that's only doing 500,000 and I can, I can get this thing turned around and I can get it to 750. Now we go to making 100 grand. What if I can take this location that's doing a million and I can get it to one five? Right, you can start to see like some small changes here. What if I can take it from a 50% gross margin to a 52% gross margin? And what if my rent, I can get at like 1500 per location instead of 24,000 per location? And you can start to see the impact it has. And down at the bottom line, you know, we got this thing now making almost a million dollars. We went from 600 grand to almost almost a million, making, making these changes of driving sales, looking at margins, reducing costs. That's what's really exciting and what you would really have to kind of get into when you build these things is you got to understand what does it look like from a single unit perspective and then what does it look like from a multi-unit perspective and let's say i go out and hire somebody i shift this eighty thousand dollars from paying myself to, to paying somebody else and i'm also going to pay them a bonus of let's say another one percent of sales so in total i go out and i spend you know i invest one hundred and thirty thousand in bringing on a new person but i also believe hey this person's got some bandwidth here Right, like I was doing all this job plus like running a company and now I've around somebody and I think we can open up uh, two new locations. And so we go from maybe a five unit business to what if we said, hey, this person's got some bandwidth here and we can add another two locations at the same margins and maybe we do need another warehouse. So we put that in here. And then all of a sudden now we just added another 260 grand to the bottom line. So now the business is making over $1.1 million. And obviously this is a spreadsheet. Obviously everything goes like up and to the right, but it shows you what's possible. And this is the same process that we've used to scale our business to 33 locations that does over $42 million in revenue. It's building sheets exactly like this and scenarios that look exactly like this. This is everything here on a location-based model. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. So next I wanna get into a truck based model. Now this model is very popular in franchises where it's something like junk removal. We got two guys, they're in a truck and they are going to someone's house to pick up junk, to another's house to pick up junk, to take it to the yard, right? And they come back and her truck, they can only do so much, right? There's only so many hours in the day. There is a, a capacity for each truck so if you want to grow this business, you buy more trucks. You go from one truck to two trucks to three, four, five, six. Eventually you have this whole fleet of trucks like roaming around each one with its own profit center. This model is identical to the last one, except there's one additional variable, which is our truck level expenses. So we have sales, right? Which is kind of a factor of how many trucks do we have times the amount of sales per truck we can generate. We're going to have our cost of goods which is going to be our materials, our labor. And I also add fuel in here, right? Because fuel, the more more trucks we have, 
and the more sales are generating, most likely the more fuel we're gonna be burning. And so it, it becomes a, a significant expense. That will come up with our gross profit. Then we have our variable expenses like we did before with royalty, advertising, brand fund, commissions, all that stuff. We're gonna have truck level expenses. So this is the thing we're gonna add where each truck is gonna have expenses, right? You're gonna have a truck payment. You're gonna have auto insurance per truck. You would have workers comp generally kind of like per employee. And when you add employees, you're adding trucks. So I put it there. You will most likely have a, a software subscription per truck. You're going to have like an iPad to like go over the itinerary or phone or whatever. You're going to have repairs per truck and just other expenses. So like the more trucks you have, the more these expenses will go up. So we want to make sure we put them in here. And then in your operating expenses, I have a couple more like roles here. You're going to have a route manager eventually. So right, you have multiple trucks like on the road. You're gonna have somebody who needs to like plan out those routes so that they're they're efficient. So you reduce your fuel costs and reduce your labor costs. You're gonna have somebody driving sales. So uh, separate from trucks, they're gonna go out and be building sales relationships and stuff. You may eventually have a general manager who's gonna oversee the whole entire operation. You know, to start, most likely gonna be you. Your loaded costs, right? That's approximately 15% of payroll, payroll taxes, health insurance, that kind of thing. You're gonna have rent, which is most likely gonna be some sort of warehouse space. You're going to have other subscriptions like your CRM, your marketing fees. You're going to have supplies. You're going to have insurance and vehicle payments and fuel. Now, these are for your like route managers, your sales managers, not your like trucks, but more your, your support staff and then other. We're going to go here and start to say, hey, we have one truck that can do, let's just say, to keep this simple, $300,000 a year in this model. And we think, let's say it's a window washing company. So we go out, we clean windows. And we believe that we can do $20, $25,000 per month. 300K a year is like what we think the, the thing should be able to do once we get it rolling. We have like almost no material cost because you know, it's just like soap and like water. Fuel, we think we can keep about 5%. We're going to get that primarily from probably talking to other franchisees and then back it into some math based on how many miles we think they do and average cost per mile, all that stuff. And then we're going to have this direct labor. And now in talking to other franchisees and FDDs and all this stuff, we believe that our direct labor is going to be about 25% of sales. And I have this little verification thing that says, assuming we have two guys per truck and assuming that our guys are going to work 40 hours a week, this means that we are going to have an hourly wage of about $18 paid to employee. So there's this question to you that says, hey, do I believe I can get two guys at $18 an hour to work this business? If yes, then we're good. If no, then we're going to have to play around with them things. So if we said, hey, I think I can get guys a lot cheaper in my market. I think I can get people for $15 an hour. If you put in, change this percentage from like 25 to like 20, let's say, and you see this drops to 15, that just kind of shows you what it could be. If you say, hey, there's no way, like I'm going to have to pay over you know, 22 bucks an hour. I'm putting in 30% here. That gets me to 22. Now, in my case, I believe 25 is a good number. I believe I can get people for this kind of low skill, easy to learn. And so I'm gonna put that in that in here. And then we're gonna get into our fees. So maybe I find this brand's FDD, just like I did before, and royalty 7%. I'm gonna have 4% 4 on advertising. I'm gonna spend 2% on a brand fund. They have a call center, I'm gonna use that. It's 1%. I am gonna take credit cards. I'm probably gonna take a lot of credit cards. So I'm gonna be at 3% and I'm gonna pay a 2% commission to whoever that I bake in here. I would have a $600 month truck payment. I believe auto insurance is gonna cost me $300 because I, I talked to this insurance guy I know and this is what he, what he told me. I believe workers comp is gonna be about 250 again. Talk to one of my guys to get this together. I'm gonna have a $400 subscription for an iPad. I'm gonna spend hundred bucks a month on, on repairs and I'm gonna have $350 of I don't know, miscellaneous expenses. So every truck is gonna cost me two grand. So whether a truck is sitting on a lot or doing whatever, it's, it's about two grand a month. And then to start, I'm gonna do everything. I'm the franchisee, I'm gonna wear all the hats. So I don't have a route manager or a sales manager or a general manager. I have my warehouse, my subscription supplies, insurance, all this other stuff. And I am making about 9%, right? So one truck, I'm like basically breaking even here. But the goal is not to have one truck, right? The goal is to fill the first truck up and buy a second truck. So now I go here and I say, hey, I, I buy a second truck. And once again, our, our, our variable cost now just, just doubles, right? I have two trucks now, so I've got two crews. These costs double. My truck expenses double, right? Everything doubles. But my, my fixed costs stay the same, right? Because like, I still got my same like rent. I still got my same like subscriptions here. And all of a sudden now, instead of only making like 30,000, I'm making, I'm making what? 130,000. 
Like a lot more of that money fell to the bottom line because I already had a bunch of expenses covered. And I'm gonna work my ass off to fill that second truck up. And now I'll get to my third truck. So now I've got three trucks on the road. Once again, all these expenses go up. And man, I'm doing pretty good. $233,000 a year, 26%. I'm cruising. I also don't have a lot of time on my hands. I'm like trying to juggle all these things. And so I need to hire someone. So I go out and I hire a route manager who I'm going to pay, I don't know, 4,500 bucks a month, 54K a year. Actually, maybe I'm going to pay him a little bit. And I'm going to increase my commission maybe to 3%. So he's going to get a little bit of that money. Now it drops my profit, right? Because I'm, I'm bringing him on but it frees up my time and my time allows me to go out and build relationships and sell more and boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden I've got four trucks now because I, I just signed up another account. I'm getting all these guys going. Now we're up to 260. And then you can start to play with these numbers, right? So what if I was only doing $20,000 a month in revenue, not 25, that two, 250, 260 drops to 262, right? Huge loss in efficiency. What if my labor was 30%? I'm down to 107. What if this guy cost me like 5K a month? I'm now down to 11%. I went from a 25% plus model to now down to 11. So you can see what can happen if you don't get these things right. And so it's really important to, to kind of understand the model, talk to franchisees, try to understand what the, what the growth scale looks like, try to understand like how much can you handle? And like, if, if I was starting this thing from scratch, I would handle as much as possible and then I'd start to hire people to replace myself step by step. So if I get this thing back to 30,000, back to 4,500 my manager, and I get this thing up to five trucks, so I've got 10 people managing five routes, man, I'm, I'm like crushing it here, 381,000. And what if I go ahead and I, I get this thing rolling and then I can find another territory and I can do this whole thing again. And I can get to from five units to 10 units and I just keep growing the business. I have a friend who does over $100 million in revenue in a junk business. They run this exact model. They own a market. They have a bunch of trucks in the market. Then they own multiple markets. So like anything is possible in franchising. That's like what's the most exciting part is that you're given this framework. You're given the playbook, but it's up to you to go and make it happen. And so if there's anything I can do to help you, I would be happy to. So drop any questions or comments you have below. If you want to download the spreadsheet, just put your email in in that link and you can grab this. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.